I'm Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com, coming to you here on KenRockwell.tv. I just got my brand new Nikon Z5. I got the kit with the 24 to 50. Let's take a look and unbox it and see what I got. Now, this is the first time I've ever even seen this box. I just got it brand new from my friends at B&H. You'll notice the box is totally unsealed. Unlike a bottle of milk or a CD or a DVD or a Blu-ray you might buy, which comes uh, <laughs> wrapped in plastic so you know if anybody's screwed with it, this camera is totally unsealed. So you have to buy it at a great place like B&H, otherwise you never know if anybody's been playing with it or if the salesman has been loaning it out to his friends on the weekend. What have we got here? We've got a sticker. I got the kit with the 24 to 50. Let's take a look at the back of the box. Made in China, camera made in Thailand. Oh well, that's what you get from Nikon today. And let's see what's inside. Ah, very importantly, the reason you buy from a good deal like B&H is you'll notice I have a USA warranty. Buy someplace else or buy it retail, you never know what you're going to get. You could get a gray market product, which is the same camera, but it would have no warranty in the United States. Also, oh gosh, look at this. Nikon lens, one year. Nikon lens, four years. So the lens, which is this little plastic thing, as I think we're going to see, this is the card for the lens. This is the card for the camera. Make sure the serial numbers match the actual things that you get in your box. Otherwise, the warranty doesn't apply. And this is what you get when you buy the USA version, which is the only way you get it in the United States unless you do something silly like buy it at an authorized retailer. And all the guys from whom I buy, I have a link to them in my description. I've been using them. I've been buying from B&H since the 1970s. Anyway, that's why I love them so much. They've always taken care of me ever since I was a little kid back in junior high school. Here's an advertisement for the Nikon School, which is good. I took the Nikon School back in about 2000. It's not really a school. It's a seminar in a hotel in a conference room where they give you a slideshow. But it's a really good slideshow because it's taught not so much by salespeople, but by actual photographers who just happen to be good with people. Gee, I don't know about online. I could do without online training. But this is not a bad deal. This is just an advertisement for the Nikon School. Here are our manuals, printed manuals. Gosh. Here's a manual for the lens, which is actually, oh, looks like a book, but it's not. It is just a bunch of folded paperwork <laughs> in six different languages. The manuals, let's see. The manuals for the camera. We got one in Espanol and one on Inglés. Don't see a French manual for our friends in Canada. That's too bad. So, but at least it's a real printed manual, and this is a manual you can take with you. Although today, I think everybody just downloads the PDF and keeps it on our iPhone. Rather than carrying a paper manual. But this is good. This is a basic camera. It's a very inexpensive camera. And the fact that it included a printed manual is encouraging. Thank you, Nikon. In our box, what did we get? Okay, we got a lot of stuff. I'll bet you that's the camera. I'll save that for later. Let's take a look. And this is the first time I've seen this. This is not a rehearsed unboxing. This is a live, who knows what I'm going to get unboxing. So let's see here. This is, okay, this is a USB-A to USB-C cable. That's not exactly exciting, and I bet you you can charge the camera that way. Here's a box. Oh, I was wondering what's in the box. There's a serial number. The box is serialized, and I will assume that this is our lens. The lens is simply wrapped in bubble wrap, which is a perfectly good way to do it. These bubbles are actually very protective because they have air in them, and if you drop it, they progressively resist the forces that be. We've got a plastic cap. Cap is made in Thailand. The lens was claimed and is, oh, they're gonna hide it from me. Let's see if it agrees with what it says in the box. Made in China, sad but true. The lens collapses for storage. Ah, this is done right. There's a little bit of a detent. So when you're zooming, you just shoot it like this, and when you want to put it away, because you're carrying it, without even looking at it, you can close it. That is nice. This is rubbery. The zoom ring is rubbery. This focus or programmable ring here is just hard plastic. And everything seems to be just plain old plastic. It has a seven-bladed diaphragm. It's all electronically controlled. Ah, look at that huge rear element. Yeah. Ah. This is going to have excellent optical performance, but the question is, do you really care? Does anybody really care about a 24 to 50 millimeter f4 to 6.3 lens? It is so slow. Uh, but, you know, it's all your personal preference. It's a weightless lens. Nikon has made other 24 to 50 millimeter lenses, and everybody forgot about them because it was such a dull range. Put 
put that back in its box. And what else have we got in our goodie box here? We've got a strap. I never use these straps. I use my regular straps, and I just see these in the box for whenever I resell my camera. We've got a charger. This is the, oh, I hate these chargers. I guess it's easy enough to take out. Is this a MH25A? They've probably been selling these for over 10 years with all their cameras for their batteries. The problem is it's got just one light, and it's one color, and it blinks slowly when it charges, and it stays unsteady when it's done. I much prefer Canon's chargers that have amber lights that blink one, two, or three times, depending on how charged the battery is. And then when it's done, it goes to green, which stays steady. So it's just a very quick look. You can tell how the battery's doing. Unlike this, we have to stare at it for a few seconds. Maybe I'm picky, but I've been shooting for so long and shoot so many different kinds of cameras, good and bad, that I have my opinions on this. But considering that I believe this camera charges via USB, it's actually very nice of Nikon to include this charger because... I don't think I'll ever use this charger if it charges over USB. And again, read my review. The link to my full review is on my website at KenRockwell.com. This is not a review. This is just an unboxing. And you can read the full review and read all the intimate details about how it charges. Here's our battery. It's got a cap. You keep this cap on it when it's in your pocket so it doesn't short circuit and put your pants on fire. Liar, liar. It's an ENEL15C. Sales made in Japan, further processed in China. In other words, made in China. Well, that's typical for batteries today. Although the Canon 1DX Mark III battery is actually made in Japan. This little gizmo here, <laughs> that is the plug stump for the charger. Another reason I hate the charger is you have to either bring a cord or you plug this thing on it. You want to see how bad that is? Let's shame Nikon here. You've got to be kidding me. They think I'm going to carry this thing in my bag and, oh, does it fold? That doesn't count. You can't put it in a bag like this. You've got to separate them so you don't break off these prongs, throwing everything in there. And now you're going to lose one or the other, and you can't charge. I much prefer Canon's chargers or the other smaller Nikon chargers where they just flip out the prongs. But, you know, Nikon didn't ask me, and so that is their problem, not mine. Again, I think it's rather kind of them. The battery does charge in camera via USB. You don't even need that external charger. That external charger is really a benefit. They usually sell for about $50 separately. This way, if you have a spare battery, you can charge one in the camera and one in that charger each night when you come back from shooting whatever you're shooting. Ah, now let's get to our camera per se. It's simply wrapped in bubble wrap. Ah, it's got this. Sometimes they serial numberize these bags, but not this one. Aha, the moment for which you've all been waiting. It's got a screen protector more correctly, in transit, so people don't get their fingerprints or scratch your screen. It's got a flippy screen. I don't really like these. I'd much rather have a solid screen just bolted to the camera, but some people like these. Uh, I can shoot at odd angles, but hey, you know, it's got a flipping screen. It only goes down this far, or it goes up this far for shooting at odd angles. If you're shooting vertically, and you really, it doesn't rotate, and it doesn't swivel left to right. We've got our serial number. Make sure that matches what's on your paperwork. Made in Thailand. Feels pretty nice. Actually, this is a sturdy little camera. Again, the full review of what all the materials are will be up at my website. This is a nice camera. I think this is going to be my favorite Nikon full frame mirrorless. There we go. There's our battery hole. The card door. Ah, it's got two cards. God bless Nikon. It takes normal SD cards, not those exotic or expensive CF Express or XQD cards, which I hate. It's got a direct control dial, which I love. It's got three presets. And if it's like the Z50, which I prefer to these full frame cameras, these actually work properly, unlike the full frame cameras where it doesn't remember everything in U1, U2, or U3. But we're gonna see, I'm gonna watch my full review. It's lens mount, standard for Nikon. Ah, notice the shutter's wide open, sucking in all your dust. It <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's like Canon's that'll close its shutter when you turn off the camera to keep dust and the crud off of there. Let's take a look at the connectors. Oh, they're fairly well marked. We've got headphones and mic jack. These are the crappy little rubbery, plasticky. These fall off after a number of years, and then you lose them, and you have no insulation or isolation whatsoever from the elements. These look fairly common. These are 3.5 millimeter jacks. And I say that, even my professional D3, the connector covers its head like this, have long since fallen off. What happens is, is you see this tiny little piece, a tiny little piece there, 
Can I show that? That little thing there, that eventually breaks off over time. USB-C, HDMI, and we've got a little tiny connector there for remotes. Although you can use the app for remote for free. This is a rear monitor or viewfinder monitor control switch. This controls if we're shooting movies or stills. Here's how we focus our eyepiece. And I think that's it. That's everything that's in our bag. So I thank you again very much for watching Ken Rockwell. KenRockwell.com, all live here on KenRockwell.tv.